Hi, this is Tamara from MooglyBlog.com, and in this video, I'm going to demonstrate how to work the Alpaca Your Wrap pattern, which is a free crochet pattern that you'll find on MooglyBlog.com. Here I have the finished wrap, which is made with Lion Brand 100% Baby Alpaca, and for mine, I used a 5mm furls hook. This one happens to be tulip wood. Here I have my finished wrap, and Basically, it's a four row repeat worked right up until you get to the border, which is a row of double crochets and then three rows of single crochet and chain three loops and then a single crochet border all the way around. But before you work that final single crochet border, you're going to attach to the foundation chain and work in the other direction. So let me set that aside. I'm going to show you the basic idea of the stitch pattern here. Now. This pattern is worked in a multiple of 8 plus 4, so here I have 28 chains. That's 8 times 3 plus 4. Alright, so beginning with row 1, what we're going to do is yarn over and double crochet in the fifth chain from the hook. I like to work into the back loop of the chain, uh, the back hump I should say, not the back loop, but you can work into any part of the chain that you like. In fact, the part that you don't work into will be worked to, into when you work the second half of the wrap working off the foundation chain. So it doesn't really matter, you just pick your favorite part. So in the fifth chain from the hook, one, two, three, four, five, I'm going to go ahead and work a double crochet. Then I'm going to chain one and skip two, and then in this chain after that I will work a wide V, which is a double crochet, chain three, and then a double crochet in the same stitch. And wide V is just what I'm calling it here. There's That's not an official name. But it's sort of like a V stitch, which usually just has a chain one, but this has a chain three in the middle. Then skip one stitch and work a double crochet, two together, but you're going to skip three stitches in the middle. So we stop with two loops left on the hook like we normally would for a double crochet, two together, skip three chains, and work the second leg, the second half of that double crochet, two together, in the fourth chain. Yarn over and pull through all three loops and there you go. And that's the basic repeat. We'll chain one, skip one, work that wide V. It's only at the beginning here and then at the end of this row that we'll skip two. So don't let that part trip you up here. So there we are. There's our wide V, our double crochet, chain three, double crochet in the same chain. We're going to chain one, skip one, and work our double crochet two together, skipping three in the middle. So there's one half, skip three, work the second half. Alright, then one more, we'll chain one, skip one, work the wide V. One, two, three, right back in that chain. And then at this point, we should only have four chains left. And there they are. So now we're going to chain one, skip two, and in the last two chains here, we're going to work a double crochet, two together. One, start the second one here. Working to that last chain is always a little bit of a bear. You can get your hook in there. There we are. And finish up that last double crochet two together. And that's row one. Row one is a little different in that you're skipping two stitches at the end and at the beginning there. So row one is not officially part of the repeat. It just kind of starts the pattern off. So with round two, or excuse me, row two, we're going to start the pattern repeat. So to start row two, we chain three. And we will be treating this like a double crochet. Chain two more, so chain five total. That's a double crochet and a chain two is how those are going to be treated. Now, turning, we're going to work a double crochet into the top of the first double crochet of that wide V there. So, double crochet in there. And then you're going to work two double crochets into the chain three space. So 
go right down in there into the chain space and work two double crochets. Then the fourth double crochet is in the top of the last double crochet in that wide V. Okay, so when you're looking at row two, you've got the chain three as like a double crochet right there, chain two, then skip to that wide V, work a double crochet, two double crochets in the chain space, and a double crochet in the top of that second half of that wide V there. Then you're going to chain two, one, two, and in the top of the decrease, we're going to just work a double crochet. And chain two. And that's the repeat that's worked for this row. We're back to a wide V, so we're going to work a double crochet in the first half here, the first double crochet, two double crochets in the chain space, I know this is hard to see. This yarn is very drapey, so unfortunately I have to keep a real good grip on it while I'm working with it, and I can't show the previous row too well, but then that fourth double crochet goes into the top of the second double crochet of the wide V there. And then we'll chain two and work a single double crochet in the top of the decrease. Chain two. And as we come to the end of the row, there will be one more wide V here. So we'll work a double crochet into the first double crochet. Oops, dropped some of my yarn here. Let's try that again. Natural fibers can be a little slippery, but the end result is just so nice. And with this pattern in particular, in mini lace patterns, once you block it by getting it wet and laying it out, kind of stretching it out, or you can use steam, uh, where you want to use a hot iron and hold it above. Don't let it touch, but hold it above the fabric. The lace just really opens up beautifully. So here we are at the end. We've made our four double crochets into that last wide V. We'll chain two, and then work a double crochet right in the top of that chain three. Really, we skipped four, but the chain three, again, is acting like kind of a double crochet, or it's almost like these are a double crochet two together. But work it into the top of the chain three there to finish off row two. All right, and that's row two. And that'll be the first row of every repeat that you work. So to start row three, we're gonna chain four. And this chain four is going to act like a double crochet and a chain one. So turning to work into the next row here, we're going to double crochet right in the top of the double crochet we made at the end of the previous row. So it's almost like a V stitch to start off row three, because we've got our faux double crochet, chain three, chain one, and another double crochet right in the same stitch there. Then we're gonna chain one, and over the top of this set of four double crochets, we're gonna work one of our wide double crochet decreases, our double crochet two together, by working the first leg in the first double crochet, and work the second leg into the last double crochet of that set of four. All right, and kind of start seeing the shape take place here. You've got the, the wide V, the four, and then a decrease. So that kind of makes the oval or the leaf shape to the pattern. So after that decrease, you chain one, move on to that single double crochet sitting there, and you're gonna work one of your wide Vs which is a double crochet, chain three, double crochet, all into the top of that lone double crochet of the previous round. Then chain one, and it's time to work another decrease over the set of four. We start the first half in the first one, and finish it with the second half in the last one. As you can see in action, this is relatively easy to remember, chain one, we come to another loner, another lone double crochet. So we'll work our double crochet, chain three, double crochet in it. And here we are already at the end of round three. So we'll chain one. We've got a set of four double crochets. So that must mean it's time to decrease. First leg in the first one, second leg in the last one. 
and then to finish it off we're going to chain one and then work an actual V stitch which is a double crochet chain one double crochet in the top of the chain three so remember where we started row two with a chain five so we want to count up one two three and work that V stitch into that third chain of the chain five so we want to leave those other two chains to be the chain two so double crochet chain one and double crochet right back in that same chain and that is it for row three now row four very simply starts off with three double excuse me three chains which work as a double crochet then we're going to work a double crochet in the second half or the second double crochet of the V that we ended the previous round with so skip that first stitch we've got our first stitch with our three double crochet or excuse me three chains skip the chain and work a double crochet into that next double crochet then chain two and then here we come to a double crochet two together decrease so in that we're going to work a lone double crochet then once again we chain two we come to a wide V so we're going to work a double crochet in the first one two double crochets in the chain space one and two and then a double crochet in the second half the second double crochet of the wide V dropped a little bit of the yarn again there there we go then chain two and then we're back to a decrease so we work another lone double crochet right in the top of that chain two and work our set of four double crochets first one in the first double crochet two in the chain space and one in the very last double crochet we're approaching the end of this row so we're going to chain two we see we are ending basically the, the main repeat here it's going to end with a decrease so we'll work a single crochet right or excuse me a double crochet a lone double crochet right in the top of that one finish it off by chaining two and then we're going to work a double crochet in that last regular double crochet and then work another double crochet in the third chain of the chain four again treating it like the top of a double crochet stitch itself and that is it for row four see our stitch patterns already coming together let me pull up a little more yarn here I have to flip over the ball here and I want to point out at this point I'm working the uh, alpaca yarn from the outside of the skein with this yarn in particular you want to work from the outside if you work from the inside natural fibers they can rub together and sort of sort of snag on each other so it's a good idea to work from the outside of the ball so let's work row five which is the last row of our four row repeat we're going to start with a chain three and work a double crochet not in that last double crochet but the next double crochet these will each count or rather I should say they won't each count the uh, this will kind of count it like a double crochet two together even though it's very similar to when we work them separately just because of the way the chains work that will be counted as a double crochet two together but you don't really have to worry about that until the next row so we'll chain one and first thing we come to here in our repeats is a lone double crochet so we're going to work our wide V into it and I think you can see at this point how really if you can read what's in the previous row you can see what's next it's just working the beginning and end of each row where you really have to look at the instructions once you've got the pattern established chain one we come to a set of four double crochets so we're going to decrease working the first half into the first one and the second half into the last one and then of course chain one we come to another lone double crochet so we work a wide V into it double crochet chain three and double crochet chain one 
we come to a set of four, so we're going to work a decrease. First half in the first one, second half in the last one. Chain one, come to that lone one, work our last wide V here. One, two, three, pull up a little more yarn. Finish off that last wide V. We're going to chain one, and then in the very last stitch here, we've got a double crochet and a chain three. We're going to treat these as if they were separate stitches. So work a double crochet two together, first half in the first, or in the last actual double crochet, second half in the top of that chain three. This is one of those really tricky ones to get into because we want to work right in that very last one before our last stitch. So always make sure you're not working your chains too tight for, for these especially. All right, and then we finish off row five with that double crochet two together. And that's the basic repeat. You've got rows two, three, four, and five that worked over and over again until you come time to make the uh, sort of the, not so much the border, but the edging. Um, this is worked lengthwise, and then you work a four row border, and then you edge all the way around. But before you do that, you'll come back probably with a new skein and go ahead and join the foundation chain and take off the other direction so that you've got a really well balanced shawl where both ends are going to look the same while you're wearing it. Now I'll show you basically when you work the border it's going to be a row of double crochets. So I'll just show you that real quick. You're going to chain three is the first one and then you're going to work a double crochet in each chain space where there's one a chain one chain space you're going to work one double crochet in there, a double crochet in each stitch, and then a double crochet here, we've got a wide V, so we know there's chain three, so we're going to work three double crochets there. So basically, at the end, you want to have the same number of double crochets as there were both chains and stitches in the previous row. And of course, those numbers are given on the free pattern on mooglyblog.com. So that's it for the double crochet row, and then working back across that, you'll do a single crochet, chain three, skip a couple, single crochet, chain three, skip a couple, all the way back across. And again, the instructions for that are on the blog in that part. It's pretty simple. So I hope that's given you a good idea of how to work the basic repeats for the alpaca your wrap pattern. I hope you've enjoyed this video and I hope you enjoy the pattern. Thank you so much for watching and don't forget to subscribe. Mm -hmm.